back again in my studio and what I'm doing is working on the second piece which is part of the assemblage um, 2D to 3D. In my first um, segment of the movie I made a piece with recycled pieces and um, and I used a flat board that had a built-in frame around it. This one's a little different. This one actually has the sides connected to it so it allows the frame, it allows the board to be um, not um, have a built-in frame around it. So at some point you probably either have to display it this way or add a frame. And what I did was, again, I applied primer to the surface. After I did that, I put the beeswax and resin, which is the encaustic medium. And I applied this again to the surface, very slowly, like this, all the way across. You cover the whole entire surface. I did three layers of that, fused each layer with the heat gun, and that then allows it to um, melt and fuse the um, layers together, and then will allow the uh, pigmented colors to adhere to that. I chose, um, I think I wanted to go with the same white on top here of the board. So I put um, two or three, actually I think there's like four layers of the white on top of here. And that I tend to apply it this way because it, it's a shorter distance and the wax does now um, ad, um, adhere quickly. And then you have to heat each um, layer. And I did scribe a line in here all the way around and decided to go with this. I think we've got a, um, it's called Mars Yellow. It has a little bit of an orange tone to it. And I applied that the same way, but prior to that, I decided to put on this metal tape. And all I did was just adhere it on and then I took the heat gun and heated it up and that actually grabs the surface and makes it stick to the wax um, primer. Then I applied my wax, encaustic wax on top of this and again three coats after doing it this way I think this was also four coats and fused this um, the same way and the next step was I wanted to use the same recycle figures and I like the way this board is more elongated, larger, and wanted to play around with the images of um, the way I was going to set the composition. So I decided to cut them out. If you recall, I used these particular um, recycle pieces from uh, uh, on the street. I found more today and I cut them out again and these become the figures. I applied the wax onto that. The resin makes it shiny and after I apply the wax which is um, encaustics then I uh, fused it each one with the heat gun. So. I'm going to start to just line them up to see where I want to place these. What's interesting about this recycled cardboard, it becomes to almost 
begins to use an uh, image of like an opposite image in here, the contrasting shapes as I put them together. Again, I came over here and had more of these. So I started playing around with these. Wasn't sure where they were going, but I decided to do this and place it like this. But then I took a piece um, of one of the cardboard and cut it off and I decided to make it into a leg. I don't know why, I just wanted to do something a little different. And then I wanted to make this even more three-dimensional. So I am going to glue it to the back so it then begins to have more of a 3D effect and start having the um, 3D um, sculptural form that I'm looking for to achieve um, through the final um, movie. I found this one here. This is another piece of cardboard and I don't know what it was for. It was for something, I think, um, in a packing shipping co container. So I kept those and I also did the same thing, put the wax on top of that. So I think then I got it like that. And I said, I like the way this is a seated figure now. It's now changing the whole concept of everything going linear up. It's now bringing your eye this way towards the horizon. So I thought I needed something more. This looks like it's missing a whole lot of um, things going on here. For me, I just think it's too... Um, um, I don't know, it just doesn't have enough excitement to what's going on, breaking up the surface, which means this is very shiny and, and slick. So I wanted to bring texture back into the piece. So this is what I decided to do, a look around, and I said I want something that can really express texture. And so I went into my studio, found something that kind of like resembled... A netting and I placed it here and what I got was this and that effect did work okay but I thought this was too clumsy I wanted to really secure it to the wax so what I did was I actually looked at it and said okay there must be another way of placing it so I decided to lift these figures put it underneath. That way the netting will join underneath. It's good to just keep looking around in your studio. You'll find something or just as you're walking down the street if you see something that really excites you as far as you think it could be something that could be used in a piece uh, uh, of art, then I would just take and gather it. Um, you can always go back and pick up a, a paper bag or a shopping bag and fill it up, take it home, and just leave it aside because at some point you'll recognize it to be very useful in your art. So what I came up with was this combination, which now changes the whole scope of the piece. And I think it's beginning to look a little more uh, three-dimensional adding these surfaces. If you look at it now, I've got this going like this. And so 
I feel that now I, I can um, think a little bit further and add something else just to break it up. So I think I want to break this surface up here because everything is this way. So I looked around something crazy like a dowel. Let me stick this here, and yeah, that to me looked right. Actually, it will help prop this up. And that was the whole focus. What can I do to prop this up a little bit when I glue it? Because when you hear three-dimensional pieces, you have to also think about how you're going to attach them so they stay without them um, falling off the board. So I said, well, the dowel is going to be difficult to glue. So I looked and found these pieces of little brackets. And what I was going to use them for, they're just, I have so much hardware that's just sitting there doing nothing. So I, and then these pieces will actually be glued and screwed down with screws to fasten it on here. So that way the dowel won't move at all. It will just stay in position. So I think what I'm going to do is just leave it the way it is because I think it's almost at completion. And what I'll do next is, again, I'll cut this the netting. This I actually found at an uh, art supply store. Um, didn't know what I was going to do for it, do with it, but grabbed it anyways. I thought maybe I could build a, a sculpture with it and look what I got now. I got this going on. So I think I'm going to just adjust these a little bit and moving around to see exactly how I want to position these and if you look at it closely it's now beginning to pick up some sort of um, feels like there is some sort of like human life form going on there I, it almost looks like they're in the subway or they're just sitting, paying attention, looking up. Um, it almost like they're having conversations with each other and it's just cardboard. So, I am going to uh, then glue everything up like I did last time. Again, I will put the board on top of each, each area. We'll have to have a board separately and then this will have to be strapped down or taped down and glued. Let's sit for 24 hours again and what I'll do is I'll come back next time and show you the final piece of this assemblage uh, number two.